Welcome to InstaGTO, the next generation of GTO software. Here we're importing some hands while we go over the basic features of the program. In the replayer, you can replay heads up and spin and go hands from almost all major poker sites, and you can almost instantly find GTO solutions to the hands you've played. In the quick solver, you create your own situations and can review GTO strategies on different runouts and in different lines. In the trainer, you can create and run GTO tests, check your statistics, progress graphs, and really improve your game. In the analysis tools, you can create stats for every situation, hand combination, and board. You can see the stats in the graph interface, compare them with optimal strategies, compare your game to other players, and more. And in the hand history tab, all imported hands are saved with the complete solutions, so you can review the hands again anytime. Now let's stop the calculations and go back to the hand replayer. Here you can see the user details with the daily calculations you have, your license type, and the notification bar. To start with calculations, you set your tree size and accuracy, from small tree with a medium accuracy to a very large tree with very high accuracy. For most situations, we recommend the large tree with high accuracy. There are three ways to import your hands. You can load manually, you can load from a text file, or you can load from your database, which you saw at the beginning of the video. You can use predefined filters or create your own to import specific hands. Let's show the Jack-9 hand. Here you can see the classic replayer. The actions up top are colored, which gives information about the decisions. The first color is a frequency difference from the GTO strategy, and the second is an EV difference. When you click a node, it displays a complete GTO chart. Here's an example of Freaks with the action, and he played his hand correctly. If we click the EV button, we switch from strategy mode to EV mode. And again, we can see checking is the best action. You can also mouse over the charts to see more detailed information. You can switch between actions and hands by using the arrow keys or the arrows on your keyboard. You can also turn on and off the weighted ranges feature. With the ranges feature on, you can use the focus bar to more clearly display low frequency combos. Here you can see the actions and the frequency each action is taken. On the right, you also have a breakdown of hands by hand type and it shows the actions taken with each class of hands. You can right click and transfer them directly to the quick solver from the main interface. Let's clear the list now. And in the hand history, we can load the hands we just looked at. You can replay them again or use other tools for analysis. So let's add another hand to the quick solver and check that out. The quick solver allows us to change the actions in the hand and create new situations. Here we're manually inputting some hand details, which we'll then use to create a quick solved hand. We input the board, the preflop stack sizes, the flop, some actions, and start the calculation. As you can see, the transferred hands are already visible. So let's check out the quick solver. 
You can see it's a similar interface to the base replayer. However, you can now click on the actions, bet 30, call, future cards and future streets. And the GTO solutions will be instantly generated. Here again, we immediately have a turn with many sizings. And just from clicking, we can evaluate lines and check the GTO strategy in any situation. What if we choose the largest tree and the highest accuracy? Here we're making a few small changes due to the tree type. And now we run the calculation. You'll notice that now the calculation takes a little bit longer. Further, we've input a complete flop line and the variables are left to the turn and river. So here, it took about two or three times as long. As you can see, now we have even more sizings available, such as 125%, which are not available in the smaller tree types. And you can see the raised sizings also have many options as well. If you want to go back and check a different line, all you have to do is click on the node at the left. Then you can choose whatever different options you want and the tree will be instantly displayed. So this is a good demonstration of the speed and power of InstaGTO, allowing you to check any line on any board in just seconds. In the analysis tools, you can analyze your GTO game. The overall will give you a quick summary based on the stats you've already created. It's possible to create custom stats for any action, combination, board type, player group, street, and more. So you have a lot of power to really dig into your game. Here, FDI is the difference from the GTO frequency of taking an action. EVDI is the EV difference between your play and GTO play. And GDI is an overall difference from GTO. The frequency graph shows quality of actions by frequency, from dark green for perfect to red for clear mistakes. The purple line shows the EV average per interval which you can set in the top right. Further, you can use donuts as a different way to display your strategy. You can see your strategy, a balanced GTO strategy, EV by the best EV action, and a frequency breakdown. The optimal strategy and optimal charts pane help you clearly see where your game deviates from GTO. Here you can see that we should bet 50% of the pot more often. We also have a line graph interface. The solid line shows your strategy. The dashed lines represent GTO frequencies. So you can see some of our stats are almost perfect. They're very close to GTO. However, some other stats have quite large differences in GTO. Here we can see we bet 50% way too much and we really need to find some more checks. And this is clearly shown on the chart with the pink line much, much higher than the dash and the yellow line basically not on the graph. You can change the sensitivity level if you want more specific information. 
and you can track over time whether you're getting closer or farther away from GTO play. The EV versus your opponent shows not you versus GTO, but you versus the villains you've played. Here you can see your plus 4.64 chips over 23 actions. In the player list, we can see a complete breakdown of players we've imported hands against. We can compare whether we're playing closer or further away from GTO than them. For example, when a player's numbers are all red, it means he's playing a losing game versus the hero. The GTO graphs show overall statistics about the hero's play. We can show four lines on the graph. Delta EVDI shows us if we're playing closer or further away from GTO than our opponents. Delta FDI tells us that about the frequency. If those two graphs are going up, it means we're playing closer to GTO frequencies and higher EV relative to GTO than them. So let's see. You can see here our hero is playing closer to GTO than our opponents, both in frequency and in EV. We can also check the lines versus InstaGTO. Here you can see our hero is minus 3,677 chips and 126 BV. This seems like a really large number, but in 624 hands, it's kind of normal. In the GTO trainer, we can do range training using tests. We create specific situations, which we can then test and analyze. Every test has its own statistics, which you can clearly see in a graph form. FDI is the frequency difference, EVDI is the EV difference, and GDI is an overall difference versus GTO. The graph shows action quality by frequency, from clear mistakes in dark red to perfect play in solid green. The violet line shows the EV of each test. Just like in the analysis, we can see the chart and we can see donuts to more clearly visualize our play. As you can see, here we should bet half pot less and we should check more. And again, we have the line graph interface with the solid lines being our play and the dashed lines being a GTO strategy. Using the sensitivity slider for detail, we can see that there's quite a big deviation from GTO in the test. However, we can look at the frequency graph and see that our overall play was quite good. Keep in mind, we don't always want to match our play perfectly with GTO. Against weaker fish, we should care less about frequency and go more for EV. But against regs, frequency becomes more important. And versus strong regs, we should try to match both EV and frequency of our lines. So let's take a look at a test. Here you can see the description, which is c-betting top pairs in limp spots on various cards. So let's run the test. And here we have a very similar interface. However, in this case, we have to choose the action we're going to take. So let's click on a few. Here in the chart, you can see incorrect actions in a gray border with good actions surrounded by a green border. Right now, the action in the green border is to bet 30 chips. The top row of the chart shows FDI, 
the frequency difference between R line and GTO. The second shows EVDI, the EV difference between R line and GTO. And the last row shows the optimal frequencies on the board for the combo you had. Now we can exit the test and look at the analysis screen. Here are the final results from the testing session. We have 47 FDI and minus 0.2 EVDI. And we can see the GTO charts just like in the replayer to review specific spots. We can decide if we want to continue on testing or quit the test and go elsewhere in the program. And when we quit, the graphs update with the results of the latest testing session. Thanks for watching and welcome to InstaGTO.